Welcome to our last week of Frameworks with day 23, Jesus and the Gods. Perhaps that title brought you up short. Surely there aren't any other gods. We're not talking about them, are we? Uh, Jesus is God. And that's right. But that is because, as we discover in this study, the Western Church has had a history of hundreds of years where everyone basically acknowledged that Jesus is God. This has not been the case for most of church history, and it's still not the case across the world. And the Bible presents a very clear picture, even if it is different from what our kind of anti-supernaturalist, materialist worldview often tends to think. We, we've spent such a long time without being afraid of all these powers that are out there that we don't understand uh, because of our Christian heritage that we've begun to think we are the ultimate power in the universe and that we can understand things with our reason and place everything in a framework that is basically under our control or under our observation. And the Bible is much more realistic about the world that we inhabit, that there are things that terrify us that are far bigger than we understand, but they are still creatures of the living God and they are infinitely far below the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is clear that these gods are nothing, not because there isn't some reality to them in the universe, but because they are as nothing when compared with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have this confrontation between Dagon, which is hilarious, really, if you think about it, and very similar to other instances in the Bible where a God that was treated very seriously by the Philistines, just as seriously as money or science or worldviews that are materialist or economics theories are treated in our culture now. When faced next to the living Lord Jesus, falls on his face. It, this image that was supposedly so holy to him and so holy to them is nothing, is broken in pieces. Um, you see that final tragedy at the end. When he is obviously thrown down before Jesus, they nonetheless end up changing the way they go into his temple because of Jesus' humbling of this non-God. His heads and his hands rolled off and landed dead bits of nothing on the threshold. And now they respond to that by reverently stepping over the threshold so that they don't end up treading over his head and hands. Uh, that's often what happens when Jesus decisively confronts idols. People reverence the idols still, even after Jesus has made a mockery of them. And this is very clearly what happens in Isaiah 36 and 37. This underling of the king of Assyria to use uh, the phrase that I think Isaiah uses, or uh, Jesus speaking through Isaiah uses, compares Jesus again with all the gods of the nations that they have conquered. This is exactly how people in the 20th century used to speak. Uh, God is dead. Nietzsche said it, lamenting this fact. But people subsequently said, yeah, we killed him. We're not. We're the ones who are in charge. Every other nation, every other god has fallen to us. And it all ended in disaster, as it always does. These are not new ideas, but Jesus also has not changed. That final moment and the end where this unbelievably powerful army is destroyed as the church sleeps. This threat to wiping out the witness to the living God is dealt with in one night by the mighty Lord Jesus, the angel of the might of the Father. And then later as well, this king who has been such a threat in the temple of his God is destroyed by his own sons, according to the word of the Lord of heaven and earth. It's very important not to look at all the idols and try and work out what our culture worships and whether these very detailed ideas that seem to set themselves up against simple faith in Jesus, whether they're worth anything. No, if we look at them, we'll be sucked in and we'll begin to think that they're full of truth and reality. Or if we spend a long time studying other religions, we'll just get sucked in because we're very easily persuaded by lies. But if we spend all our time looking at the living God, we'll realise these things are nothing. They're nothing. They enslave their worshippers to lies. Because when we worship created things, which everything we worship except Jesus by default is, we end up turning in on ourselves. We end up turning away from the life 
and joy and peace and glory of Jesus, the only real God in the universe, uh, as he loves and reveals his Father in the power of the Spirit. Uh, it's quite a challenge to our natural way of thinking in this enlightenment world that says there's nothing supernatural, there's nothing more powerful than we are. Well, the Bible has no problem with saying there are things more powerful than we are. It just says they're utterly relativized by the glory and sovereign power of the Lord Jesus.